I'm Jerry Brown, and this is Father Nick Pavia, and welcome to Armor On. Yep. Um, last show, we un ended up on the rosary, the uh, Luminous Mysteries. So we're going to talk about the Luminous Mystery number five, the institution of the Eucharist. Yes. Father Nick, you want to share? Well, the Eucharist for us Roman Catholics, for us Catholics, uh, Christians, is the source and summit of the Christian life. And um, if our own followers really understood what's going on, something beautiful, something spiritual, something a gift from God, and for all the others out there, it's a chance, this show is a chance, not for any convincing, the, the Lord and His power will help, but to, to explain what we believe, why we believe it, you know, uh, for me as a Catholic priest, I love the Mass, but I love really the gift of God and the feeding of His people so we could go out into a hurting world and to do battle for the Lord. Right, and when we do battle, we have to put on our armor. Yes. So here's a prayer. It's the Armor of God prayer. Pull on your full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggles not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and the authorities and against the powers of the dark world and against the evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and your feet firmly in the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up your shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take your helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Oh, Amen. Beautiful. That Prayer comes to us from St. Paul in Ephesians chapter 6. Many, many times I tell people, Jerry, I said, read chapter 6. We're not supposed to fight against flesh and blood. It's not about flesh and blood fighting. We're, we're part of something much bigger than ourselves. And you know, I, I was talking to somebody the other day who claimed he didn't believe in God. I said, so in other words, you're the center of everything. No, I wouldn't say that. Well then, maybe there's someone who created you, who loves you, who sustains you, you know? I think a lot of times uh, we, in ministry, we're afraid to uh, offend somebody. Well, I'm not afraid to, to, uh, to tell the truth. That's where the belt of truth, I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm not afraid of the truth or, or of the gospel. Uh, Jerry, as we talked about before, I sometimes think that I'm a Bible-believing Christian in the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. I love the Bible. I love Scripture. It's one of the weapons. Can I read to you? I have a certain Bible here. It's mm -hmm. still the Bible. Yes. But this one is called the Spiritual Warfare Bible. Mm -hmm. And I got it especially for our show. And I just want to read about the Eucharist, what it says here. Mm -hmm. The Weapons of the Sacraments. The Eucharist, we noted that our corporate worship at Mass is a great defense against the assault of the devil. Mm -hmm. It's the Eucharist at the heart of the Mass mm -hmm. that gives it such might. It's the in epicenter of God's victorious power in our lives. The passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus defeated Satan decisively for all time. Through the holy sacrifice of the Mass, His glorious triumph is represented so that we can become intimately joined to that saving event. The Eucharist, St. Peter Julian tells us, is the work of a measureless love that has its, at its service an infinite power, the omnipotence of God. Before that all-conquering power the demons must flee. Yes. 
I think when you think about the Eucharist, if someone were to uh, go into a church not knowing what was going on, you would see some strange things. What is all this about a little wafer of bread? What is all this? Mm -hmm. And it is the Lord. Right. And um, what do you think? Well, I, I was listening to um, a Catholic radio station, and the <clears throat> priest was interviewing a gentleman that wrote a book. And, um, of course, there's uh, Satan worshipers out there. Yeah. And they... Especially on now. Now. Right. You have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. And they them. come into the church, into our worship, and uh, we have the Holy Eucharist, and they can pick out, believe it or not, consecrated Eucharist, Eucharist that is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over just a plain wafer. Yeah, see, they know. They know. And it reminds me of Scripture when mm -hmm. the demons knew him. Yes. Why yes, have you yes. come here to torment us? Mm -hmm. We know who you are. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if we're they battling know. against the demons, they know. They and know. And then they they go into people's minds and 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 take over. Yeah. Because if we have a weak mind, that's where the devil knows. And that's where the helmet comes in. Right. The mm -hmm. helmet. The helmet is salvation. To protect. Protect uh, your. Yeah. Uh, your so mind. many. A lot of people out there. They're just listening to maybe something on the on the worldly news and whatnot. I invite them all the time to get into the good news, mm -hmm. to come with your thinking, your questions, your whatever, but to open it up and read the love letter of God. Right. Read John 6. Mm -hmm. It goes through the whole explanation. This is my food. This is my drink, my body, my blood. And so many people were leaving him then. Mm -hmm. He never chased after them. No. He never went after them saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I only mean it in a certain way. Come back, come back. Mm -hmm. No. And so I love this program, and I love the ability to try to have anyone out there in TV land mm -hmm. just maybe instead of clicking us away, just say, well, wait a minute. Uh, I'd like to hear more, or I'd like to, uh, you know, I'd like to look into this mystery even more. Right, right, yes, because this is uh, information that um, needs for people to know because we're up against that battle, that battle against evil. And if we, we can arm as many people as possible with the rosary, um, we can actually um, do a, a, a great service to the, to the world. I and mean, I like mm -hmm. when John Paul II, when he was Pope, I like that he gave us the luminous mysteries. Mm -hmm. Because until then, you didn't really have the public life of Jesus mm -hmm. in the rosary. Right. You know, so it started with the baptism, with the wedding feast of Cana, with the transfiguration, with the proclaiming of the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. and with the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. And so the Pope did the church a great service in presenting Jesus in his public ministry, what he said, mm -hmm. the Last Supper, the Passion, all of it. Right. Why? For only those people who lived back then or for us today? For us today, yes, yeah. definitely. Yes, the more um, he was a saint, and he's a saint today, but his suffering, too, when he had Parkinson's oh, and, yes. and, and he could hardly speak, he was, he was something... For me, I, I, I feel so blessed that I lived on the earth with, with a saint like John yeah. Paul. And we're right back. And Father Nick, um, we were talking about the Eucharist. And you are a priest. I'm, I'm an extraordinary minister of the Eucharist. And I can help out um, at communion at church. But there's only things I know from what I know. And you know the mystery of the Eucharist right close because that is part of um, what you do as a priest. Well, Can you explain? Itself, yeah, explain? The word itself comes mm -hmm. from the Greek meaning thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. And um, more than that, so it's the greatest gift because it's God continuing to feed his people with his very self. Um, Jesus said, I will never leave you orphan." He will never abandon us. He will be with us for all time. 
How is that possible when one generation after the other dies? And, and how is it possible? The sacrificial uh, giving of his total self on the cross at Calvary mm -hmm. is represented in an unbloody manner at the Mass. For example, we use words like Mass that a lot of people don't. Mass is the Latin word for uh, to be sent sent out it's the last thing I, my latin is not that good but um uh mass is like a way of saying go send forth go out into the world mm -hmm. we who are now fed with the lord will go out into the world and um to be christ for others but not in a symbolic way mm -hmm. in a real way mm -hmm. i mean if you're hurting and you need help you don't want just a pat on the back saying, okay, uh, I'll talk to you later. You want a real help. So God being God said, I will never leave you alone. I will always be with you. How could this man, they said, give us his flesh to eat? Before that, in John 6, they said, give us this bread always. When he said to them in John 6, a lot of this is John 6. I mean, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have the Eucharist, all have the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. But I encourage anyone out there with a Bible, and I hope there are many, that open it up to John 6. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you have a wonderful, if you go slowly with it, you have a wonderful explanation of what we talk about as the Eucharist or the Mass. What we believe, we really believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit, Common bread and wine is transformed into the body and blood, soul and divinity of, of Jesus Christ. Right. There's a word that the church has given the world, transubstantiation. When you put it apart, it means trans, to, to transforward something, substance, of real substance. So transubstantiation is the, the mystery that happens when the words of Jesus himself are said with the, the hands of the priest and the power of the Holy Spirit. I heard one convert, convert say, you know, I start to think, if I believe that God created the world out of nothing, how could I not believe that the same God can transform common bread and wine into his body, his blood, his soul, and divinity. The, 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 the mystery of the Eucharist is so wonderful and, and powerful that you really have to give it a time. That's why the urging, especially today in today's church, of Eucharistic adoration, where you simply spend time in church, in church and just be there with the Lord. Let him talk to you in your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, he's God. So many people go to uh, politicians for answers or pills or other things for answers. How about God? Mm -hmm. I feel sometimes, uh, Jerry, that God is saying, hello, hello, remember me? I'm still here. I'm with you. I'm not a bully, <laughs> so you have, to, uh, you have to seek me out, but I, I'm here with you. We, we believe that he truly is our food. We become what we eat. Right. I mean, so true. The, um, I don't think we, well, that's why hopefully the show will continue for a while. And little nuggets. I was reading a, um, a, um, a, a spiritual work where it said, read it only in paragraphs slowly or you'll get spiritual indigestion. <laughs> So, uh, so um, how many people honestly look in the Bible? The Bible from mm -hmm. Genesis to Revelation, mm -hmm. it's about the Eucharist. So to recap, the Eucharist is the uh, greatest weapon. The, the rosary is powerful, yes, but it leads us to the greatest weapon that has ever been known and given to us. It's God himself. Right. He is our food for the journey. He is our strength. He is our food. 
He is our all in all. And uh, the incarnation, if, a lot of people throughout the world don't believe that Jesus is God, that mm -hmm. Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. They'll say things like, well, he was a good teacher or he, he helped people. Mm -hmm. But the reality was he was more than just a, right. a, a human being. Right. I would, the Eucharist mm -hmm. is the sacrament of the church that says it is more than what you could see and taste. Right. It is the mm -hmm. bread that becomes the bread of life. Right, right, definitely. And I've, I've seen, Father Nick, where I've seen um, pictures online. Um, and actually, my own personal experience I'd like to share is um, I received communion one Sunday and I went up to the priest to receive it. And uh, when he picked up the body and, he, and I put, you know, my, I opened my mouth, my tongue, the host tell the, the body was like pure white, like it wasn't, wow. it wasn't the, the wafer. No, it, it was pure white, like it was, and I got back to my pew and, and I, you know, I had to kind of, you, know, you had a really good moment, moment there with the, the yes. Lord. Yes, and I've seen pictures where priests have held the the, the body, and then they have blood through the the the, the host. And you could the, investigate yeah. it. Mm -hmm. They went in uh, in a trip into outer space, NASA, and there was an article written a long time that um, there was this light that they they on the ground. They said, "What is that light up there?" And they realized. He had the Holy Eucharist. They mm -hmm. could they could sense it from from NASA. Yeah. No. no, you know, there's so much about it, but um, I I think sometimes we who are in it day in and day out, right. mm -hmm. we don't we don't um, explain it to the to the people who don't know what I'm talking about or don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. We really believe that Jesus Christ, His body, His blood. His soul and divinity mm -hmm. is in the form of bread and wine. And um, we consume the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. If Catholics only understood what the Eucharist was really about, mm -hmm. we couldn't build a church big enough. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, a lot of my Protestant brothers and sisters, they love scripture that's their sacrament and since a little boy i've loved scripture too mm -hmm. and the foretaste the foretaste of the eucharist mm -hmm. it's enlightening that's why i think the pope had it as the fifth mystery in the luminous mystery mm -hmm. he is the light and life of the human race jesus christ and um it's enlightening when you think about that the eucharist gives us his life we become ambassadors of God as we go forth into a hurting world. Right. We may not be able to fully understand the mystery, mm -hmm. but we should be humble enough to say, well, I believe. That's what the amen means. Mm -hmm. uh, not to criticize my own people, but sometimes they come up to receive, and the priest says, the body of Christ. And the answer should be amen. Mm -hmm. Amen from the Hebrew meaning I believe. Mm -hmm. But nothing. Yeah. I usually have to say amen for them. Yeah. yeah. I say amen. Because maybe someone coming up really has doubts. In one of the Gospels, when Jesus, right before he ascended into heaven, mm -hmm. it says of his apostles that they worshiped yet some doubted mm -hmm. so you will always have that doubt how could it be how could it be that god gives us his very self i mean either the church uh is really doing what the lord wants or mm, we're not doing what we should be doing right right yeah. Yeah, yes and 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 the eucharist I look at that the first, the Last Supper, when um, he instituted the Eucharist, and it's just been passed down, and um, it's taken. Saint Paul, yeah. I'm sorry, but Saint Paul said, mm -hmm. 
I hand on to you what right. I was handed right, on. Right, right. Yes, very good. Yeah, so it's passed down. It's passed down, down, down to generation, generation after generation. So I believe that on the Last Supper, when Jesus took the bread and blessed it and took the wine, it became yes. his body and blood, and he gave it to his disciples, and they were going to carry this on for yes. eternity. And that's what basically what you do every Sunday and, and during during yeah. Mass or whatever. You're carrying on that body and blood, soul and divinity of, of, of Jesus Christ at every Mass. Yeah. And that, that is awesome. And once you you get into that, and I've noticed in my life that it's, it's, it's just amazing. And, and, and it's the most awesome feeling. I have such um, love for the Eucharist now than i've ever had in my life and it's 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 just it's it's awesome and for for me being able to to share in that every sunday or every day that i you know i i serve as an extraordinary eucharist minister i i i'm just i at first they asked me and i said no no i'm not worthy well, you know i'm not what? worthy but i they kept at it kept at me and then finally i said yes Jerry. yes yes uh, back in 1995, when Father Poli said to me, well, Nick, what do you think? How about you becoming a priest? And I said, I'm not worthy. He's dead now. But he laughed right in my face. I could still feel the spit on my face. <laughs> he laughed right in my face. He says, worthy? None of us are worthy. Worthy. Oh, please, Nick. Do you love God? Do you want to learn more about him? Yes. Do you want to enter into the mystery? Yes. And I said, yes. And the rest is history. I've right, been a right. joyful priest for 20 <laughs> years. And yeah. yet, we have a lot of work to do. Because mm. something is wrong. We're not explaining it as we should. Mm. Or we're not living it as we should. Right, right. A lot right. of things you could accept in your mind or your head. Right. It could be all head knowledge. But unless they see those who believe this act in a way yes yes there it is right yes. that's why the armor is the armor's needed. On, is is we become like christ-like in the world and that's the key but because you somebody the gothic gifts. went to church yeah and then he's out on the i-95 and he cuts off somebody and he gives somebody the bird and he's and you just came from church yeah see mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the lord said you know don't just give me lip service. Don't mm -hmm. go through the motions. Don't partake of me and then don't act like me. Mm -hmm. You know, right. that's why I love your show. Right. And I love this whole concept of the armor. We have to put on the full armor to right. protect ourselves. Right, because the, the devil is after us. The devil is prowling like a roaring lion looking yes. for someone to devour. Right. Now that's interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. Looking for someone to devour. Well, we devour God right. in a very humble way. Mm -hmm. We consume the Lord himself right. so that we become like him. And, yes, and definitely, Father Nick, this, I, we spent a lot of time on this. On and this, is my, this is my, my, obviously I told you, it's, it's uh, my love for the Eucharist and your love for the Eucharist. And um, I'm Jerry Brown here with Father Nick, and we'll be uh, back again. Oh, it's over? Gonna, yes, and we're going to cover the Sorrowful Mysteries. All right. That's right after the, the Luminous Mysteries on our next show. Jesus is my boss for a long time, mm -hmm. since my first assignment at St. Stephen's. And I had it in the store, uh -huh. and this young man came up to me and said, that's not in the Bible. So he started to talk about all the things of Jesus. Jesus is the, the Lord of life. Jesus, And I said, did you ever hear of Jesus as the bread of life? He said, no. I said, you ever hear about the Eucharist, and Jesus is the Eucharist? No. I said, would you like to learn? And I almost fell down when he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope to see him, hope to talk to him. Jesus is my boss.
Right. But he's also the bread of life. Right. He is our all in all. Right. Armor on. Armor on. Armor yeah. on. And he'll he'll never fire you either. No, no. he won't fire me. No. No. <laughs> no. He loves us too much. Right? He'll, he'll maybe give me a little whipping, like yeah. it says in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. But he won't ever fire me. No, no he wants no, all no. to be saved. He wants us all to be saved. Yeah. And join him in, in heaven. In glory. Yeah, in glory. It's definitely. to his glory. His, yeah, his, his glory. I, I love him. Yes. Yes. Yes, he's powerful.